former Republican strategist and now turned Democrat Steve Schmidt appeared on Joy and Reed, and they started out talking about a letter, a text that a senator sent to Mitch McConnell stating that Mitt Romney's home was likely going to be firebombed or something to that effect. And, uh, you know, in other words, uh, people are in danger. There's a lot of chatter that the FBI noted was happening. And it turned out Mitch McConnell never responded to the text. Instead, he just stayed quiet about the entire thing. And so uh, uh, Joanne Reed asked Steve Schmidt about that occurrence and what he, she thought, what he thought about Mitch McConnell, etc. So he, he pretty much... Uh, said that McConnell was not going to be remembered dearly in history, which we all by now know. But the thing that he did thereafter was a complete annihilation of what the Republican Party has become, making it clear that there is only one party in this country that was supporting democracy. I want you to listen to this astounding excoriation of the Republican Party and those who represent the uh, MAGA wing and more and the cowards that pr- that prevent the, uh, the the real Republicans from being able to effectuate the things that they want. Check this out and then we'll take it on the other side. Historically, he will be remembered as a repugnant figure. Uh, the abdication of his duty um, the responsibility and the obligations are epic. So he received that email, which is chilling from Mitt Romney. And what did he do? He did what he has done for seven years. He did nothing like a turtle. He tried to put his head in the sand. He is the living embodiment of John Kennedy's admonition from his inaugural about those who seek power by trying to ride the back of the tiger only to wind up inside. What Mitch McConnell's legacy is substantially is he is the man who broke the United States Senate, which was once considered the greatest deliberative body in the world. He is an appeaser par excellence. So you have a storm system of cynicism, of cowardice, of racial malice that all combines to form under Donald Trump and has now threatened the cornerstone of the whole society, which is who gets to decide who's in power in the country? Is it something that's bestowed by the American people or is it someone who's taken or is it something that's taken by the richest, the strongest and the most powerful? This is an existential question. There are no people in the Republican Party, who, when the cameras were off for many years, praised Donald Trump. That's for TV. That's for the show. Now, Democrats, there's not a one of them who you have a private conversation with who is not extremely worried, bordering on panic about President Biden's ability to make it through this election and to win in the election. And as soon as the cameras go on, they sing a different tune. So the American people see this. There's a conversation that's held by the elites of the country that projects over the whole of the media that they're not in the room for. They're not part of, but they get it completely. How does that, how does that cynicism that results from that? Who benefits from that? The people who benefit from that are the demagogues, and the autocrats. It's the Trump movement that flourishes in the BS environment. So the Republican Party is lock, stock, and barrel controlled by the greatest threat to freedom in America since the Confederate States of America. And seven years on, the pro-democracy party in the country has been unable to put it down, unable to do it. So right now, say give them a break in 22 or 21 or 20, but in 2023, if this election were held tomorrow, it's a jump ball all over the country. And nobody should underestimate the capacity of Donald Trump to win a general election 
in 2024. And everybody should understand the plans are laid down in writing and are openly talked about, about how to dismantle the federal government within five to six months. The Claremont Institute is at the center of it. There are extremist groups who are planning for it. And when you look at this in the totality, the removal of a Supreme Court justice by impeachment in Wisconsin is part of January 6th. The impeachment that is being orchestrated without any evidence whatsoever by Donald Trump is part of January 6th. Each action is part of a greater whole. And the greater whole is a sustained attack on the American way of life, elections process, and democracy by a malevolence that has always existed in the country, but has manifested itself wholly inside the Republican Party. And the only institution in this country that has the ability to defeat it, that can defeat it, that exists to oppose this is the Democratic Party. And any fair evaluation of how the party is doing as an institution confronting this, my judgment is not good because the extremism and the threat of it has grown with each successive year. And the next election stands a chance to be America's last election if the ball bounces the wrong way. Anybody who thinks that Donald Trump and this extremist movement will be an easy, an easy campaign to win is completely deluded. And the idea that you occasionally read from anonymous White House sources that in fact they want Trump to be the Republican nominee because they assess him as the easiest candidate to beat is yeah. immoral in my estimation and a sign of judgment that is so epically bad, I don't have a word for it. Steve Schmidt could not be clearer. And you know what? Uh, I This is a guy that I had a lot of issues with when he was on the other side. I still have issues with him right now because he's still a bit on the conservative side, uh, too conservative for, for my taste, but he is an honest guy and he believes in what he believes in. He's, he's honest about it. So I think, I think more should listen to what he has to say and mold the comeback, if there's going to be a comeback of their party, on some of what he has to say here. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.